Hey guys, it's Alicia, and today we're going to explore the two compression formats, lossy and lossless. Digital images are an inherent part of the web, and it's hard to create any content without some media. The humble still image is a terrific way to offer extra context to your writing. However, an image can be enormous in file size without optimization. Lossy versus lossless compression is a common consideration because each can reduce the size of an image, although there are quality trade-offs to consider too. In this video, we will look at lossy versus lossless compression. Before we get too far, of course, I want to let you know that there will be links to more resources in the video's description. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. All right, now, what are the differences between lossy and lossless? When it comes to any digital image compressions, there are several different formats to choose from. Sometimes these will have other names depending on many factors. However, at a core level, you'll find two types, lossy compression. The aim here is to provide the smallest file size possible for an image. As such, image quality is often low down on the list of priorities. Lossless compression. You'll still find a substantial reduction in file size with this compression format, but the image won't suffer from artifacts and other issues. In most cases, your decision about which format to use will come down to your end goal. Do you want tiny files or is your focus on preserving quality? Lossy compression will remove data it deems unnecessary from the image permanently. It uses many different techniques to achieve this, resulting in much tinier file sizes. Lossless compression also removes data, but it can restore the original if needed. The goal is to keep quality high, yet reduce the file size. Lossy compression reduces the image's file size almost to the exclusion of all other aspects. The way the algorithm works is to remove data permanently. This can be as destructive as it sounds. While we won't get into the nuts and bolts too much, know that some of the data lossy compression removes is visible in the image. The idea is to offer the best representation of the original high quality image at a lighter weight. And this means some data won't make the cut. In general, there are a couple of benefits in using lossy compression. The file sizes will be small, in some cases under 10 kilobytes, and the loss of quality will be acceptable in many cases, despite artifacts. This brings us to the negatives for using lossy compression, that the image quality will reduce with any amount of compression. You'll find that color banding, where color shades don't render in the right way, and a loss of edge clarity will be visible in some cases. Images with fewer colors will show less of this, but the reduction in clarity will still be present. Also, Image degradation is a permanent feature of the compression process. This means there's no way to reverse the effects at a later date. Despite the drawbacks, lossy compression is excellent for the web and your site's performance. The tiny file sizes don't always result in grainy images, although you can, of course, take things to extremes. However, lossy isn't the only option. Lossless compression is an alternative for the quality conscious site owner. Lossless compression does what it says on the label. It compresses an image's file size as much as possible without affecting the visible quality. It does this by removing image metadata, which can take up unnecessary space. The pros of using lossless compression revolve around retaining quality. Lossless compression preserves the most quality in an image compared to all other algorithms. Lossless is fantastic for archival purposes. For example, a photographer may balance storage resources with an image that preserves the most data. And lossless is the preferred compression algorithm for visual arts, like photography, graphic design, digital art, and more. Combining a lossless algorithm with the proper depth and resolution can achieve almost a one-to-one -one copy. However, there is something to note about how well lossless compression serves specific niches. The range of applications is small. 
This reduces its overall availability. Here are some other cons of lossless compression to consider. If a website uses many images, lossless compression might not be optimal to display them. This is because you'll want to value smaller file sizes in these types of situations in most cases. Although compression reduces file sizes, lossless algorithms don't alter image data as much as lossy. Because of this, you may only see marginal reductions in size rather than extreme slimming results. At this point, you understand the difference between lossy versus lossless compression. However, you still may not know which is the best algorithm to use on your site. There are two situations to consider. First, for most use cases on the web, lossy compression is acceptable to use. And secondly, if you want to display photography or photographed art, lossless compression will serve you better. These considerations rely on using one of the standard web image formats, such as JPEG, PNG, or GIF. However, your compression needs may differ with more modern formats like HEIC and WebP. We'd go as far as to say that unless you display photography on your website, lossy compression should be your default choice. WordPress compresses images by default, which goes far to illustrate that lossy compression is suitable for almost every application. There are many ways you'll compress your images before you show them on your site. For example, you might choose to apply compression at the editing stage. This could be a byproduct of converting from raw formats anyway. However, a popular choice is one of many online services. Each one will offer a selection of algorithms and an exemplary user interface. What's more, most have some free service, at least to try out the app before you commit. We cover a few options in our article on image optimization, although these are WordPress specific plugins that connect to an application programming interface. The good news is that lots of these plugins provide an online interface as well. For example, consider ShortPixel. Here, you'll drag images onto the uploader, then wait for the app to compress and process them. However, you'll want to choose the algorithm first as the process will begin straight away. The choice is simple, two forms of lossy compression and a lossless option. ShortPixel's interface does a good job of explaining the difference between each algorithm and you can download the images within seconds. Although both can cope with your demands, the Imageify interface looks slicker and more professional than ShortPixel's. There are also three compression levels here, normal, aggressive, and ultra. The slight difference here is that Imageify starts with lossless compression and works its way up to a lossy algorithm with heavy artifacts. However, there are a couple of other options you won't find in other solutions. For starters, you can keep the EXIF data intact for your image and even resize them after conversion. This is invaluable at times, especially if you want to apply a level of compression that may otherwise remove EXIF data or limit how you resize an image. Much like its mythical namesake, Kraken can wrangle your images and apply various types of compression. Most users will opt for either the lossy or lossless types. However, there is also an expert mode. This lets you adjust the compression to your own needs, among other options. For example, you can adjust both JPEG and PNG compression levels, choose to preserve metadata from the image, and even work with chroma subsampling to change the colors further. What side do you stand on in the battle between lossy versus lossless compression? Let us know in the comment section below. The faster your site, the better your conversions. At Kinsta, our entire infrastructure is built on Google Cloud Platform's premium tier network and compute optimized C2 virtual machines, AKA the best of what Google offers. This is just one way you're able to speed up your website by up to 200%. Learn more about Kinsta's features at kinsta.com forward slash features. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.